Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And it's Jeremy from Tested. Jeremy, I've been hearing about this project that you've been using at home. You made this to solve a problem that you have. Norman, I have kids. <laughs> I have a kid too. Right? Yeah, but your kids aren't playing video games. Not yet. Uh, so I have kids and, and they play video games and they don't know how long they've been playing video games. Well, it's been like five minutes, right? It, no, it's, it's been an hour. They don't know. They have no <laughs> idea. So I took it upon myself to solve that problem. And I, and I should say before we dive any further, don't judge me. I'm just a dad trying to make my way, man. I'm just using the technology I know in order to try things out with my kids. If you have a judgment on what this means to me as a parent of my kids, just a deal, man. Like, I'm doing my best, all right? <laughs> okay. You do you, you're it up. <sighs> Some of you might actually appreciate this though, so here we go. This is the screen timer, right? This is what I call it, it's a screen timer. Um, these are all the components, it's very simple. It's based on a 3D print, which is a three-part print. Um, it has a seven segment display for the time. It has a custom circuit board, a little buzzer, a button, and it's all run off a particle photon, yep. which is like a Wi-Fi enabled Arduino microcontroller. Um, when you plug it in, it gives you the time that you set as the game timer, right? As the amount of time that you're allowed to play. In its most basic functionality, you hit the button and it starts ticking down. Oh, great. Right? <laughs> it makes a sound. It shows you the time. You have one hour, 59 minutes to go. If they want to take a break, they hit the button again. It flashes to let them know it's in pause. And they hit the button again to resume and down it goes. When it reaches zero, actually when it reaches like the last five minutes, this light here goes from green to, to orange or yellow. And then when it goes to zero, it goes to red, and it just flashes, right? So now they know how much time they have. Is that enough? <laughs> no, no, it's not. No, because we have all the clocks around. <laughs> no, kids, they're not going to listen to that. Because I'm telling you, this button actually get, potentially gets pressed all the time. <laughs> and it's in pause mode while they're still playing. Oh. So this is where the magic of this comes in. This is Wi-Fi enabled, as we mentioned. And it can be connected to if this, then that. So, when they press the button to pause it, or resume it, or reset it, you, I, mom, the kid, whoever, can get an email or a text message that says timer paused, timer resumed, and it has the timestamp, so we know exactly when Junior is supposed to be playing Fortnite and when they're not supposed to be playing Fortnite, right? And you would hope that that would be enough. However, honestly, the emails can be kind of a lot to handle. So. Maybe you turned those emails off. Maybe that, and then, then you're kind of stuck. And even with the emails on, like, you don't really know because maybe you're not home. Maybe you're on an errand or something like that. This is where it gets nefarious. Is it a dummy button? <laughs> First of all, you can control whether or not they have control over that button, right? So they can start the timer, but they can't stop it, okay? Maybe that's a good solution. Maybe it's not. But it gets even more nefarious than that because there are pads on the back and I haven't even gone this far, so again, don't judge me, but if you use this and you go that far, you're welcome to. The functionality is there. These pads on the back can connect to a device that basically controls any other device. A really, like a fancy relay, they sell them on Amazon. You plug this, you uh, solder wires to this, you plug them into the device, I'll demonstrate it. And now the game timer the screen timer can control the power of your PlayStation, of your TV, of a light in the room, or anything that you want. A webcam. It can, well, the webcam should always be on, yeah, regardless, okay, okay. constantly recording. But yeah, so that's the power of this device. It, it controls electronics, it sends alerts over the internet. If you want, the if this and that functionality can turn up the thermostat in the room to like 90 degrees to smoke them out once you've reached zero. <laughs> Whatever you have in mind. And so I'd love to share this project with the world and uh, show you quickly how to put one together. Great, let's do it. All right, so this is all the components. Um, as I said, they print like that, no supports needed. You take your D-pad, a uh, little uh, printed in clear filament because it actually uses the LED built into the photon underneath. You snap that into place there. And then you assemble your circuit board, which ends up looking like this with the seven segment display soldered together with the Adafruit backpack. It makes it super easy. It just connects to my circuit board with four pins on the bottom. You put your buzzer here, your button here, and you solder the photon directly to the board. So the magic here really is also the circuit board design that you made to match all these pieces together. Makes From it the a buzzer, little, little easier. The light, no wiring. the control board, no wiring, and also the form factor right. fits into 
this which you designed. Well, yeah, it fits onto these little pegs so that it's got little mounting holes on it and it just goes right down onto there and then this can snap down right on top of it and it just sits into these little holes. I didn't realize Done. you could print a D-pad and it would work as a D-pad. Well, it doesn't work as a D-pad. It's just a design oh, element. Oh, that's just a button. Yeah, people see this and it does look like a gamepad, it right? Does. It does. It totally looks, I guess that's intentional, but yeah. it's not actually functional. Ah. Any more than having a light that tells you, are you, you know, are you doing fine? Do you have a little bit of time left or do you have no time left? Right. Right? right. Some input, some output. So you have one already pre-assembled, yep. pre-soldered? Yeah, there's one thing that we have to do, and that's solder on those wires to control that, uh, that ACDC relay thing. So let's do that real quick, and then I can demonstrate that functionality. Perfect. So now we have the wires soldered from these pads back here into that. And there's four pads you can choose from. They all have slightly different functions, right? Like one pad is the most severe, and that's the one that we've implemented here. And that is the one where this device will power whatever it is that we're powering when the timer's running. And this works because of this relay, which works as yeah. an interrupt, mm -hmm. and all it needs is the lead to be basically passed through power. Exactly. It's flipped on, and you, that you, allows you, this to pipe power. You can use two AA batteries to test it. You just need to put a little bit of voltage on this line, and that will turn on your AC you know, device, the yes. thing that's plugged into the wall. So for instance, if we start the timer, we get power. Nice. Okay? So imagine this is your monitor, or your television, or your PlayStation. Yeah. This is the thing that must receive power for gaming to happen. I don't think resuming PlayStation works if you just cut off the power mid-game. <laughs> so no. monitor probably is best. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. I don't know. Um, although, if you were to cut the power to the PlayStation, that would be the most severe option. Yes. Yes. Right? And you probably want to have some extra time in your child's timer to allow for the boot up process to occur, right? Got it. Um, so yeah, imagine that that's happening. Now here's the back end here. Uh, while it's running, um, I can toggle allowing pause. So if I tap that, go ahead and hit the button. Nothing happens oh. now because you have been locked out. Oh, no breaks in gaming. <laughs> Whoa, no getting right. past it. Nice. Okay, so now I can also change how much time is left. So I, will, I, can, either, I can add time. Let's add 30 minutes because you've been a good little boy, Norm. Oh, what happened? It just oh no! Now it oh, I, oh no! I set the time left rather than <laughs> adding time. I'm so sorry, Norman. Uh, Here we go. So I, I believe I did an hour fifty nine minutes <laughs> there, previously. Now I've added yes. two hours onto the clock. Now we have enough time left. But now let's just tr fast forward in, into the future. We are going to subtract time. We're going to subtract a hundred and um, tw what twenty third one. 30, what if we, and then there's 19 minutes left, so then we will subtract 18 minutes, okay? Bam, so now there's one minute left. You, the timer's now, it's trying to be yellow, but LEDs don't do yellow, at least when, this one doesn't. And now when the clock expires, with any luck, I have not actually used this feature because this is too drastic even for me, but it's there, <laughs> if it comes to it, we should see our gaming monitor turn off. Now obviously if you were to connect this to another pin, yeah. uh, you could have it turn on. Mm, right? Mm, so that this just really brings to your attention yeah. that uh, your gaming timer has expired. Oh, this, this means we're in the final minute. So you don't have it programmed for seconds, just for minutes. Exactly. No, this, it would be interesting in the, last, in the final minute to count down actual seconds. That's yeah. a good idea. But no, it just counts down. It shows you the seconds with the blinking uh, dots in the center. I mean, clearly very configurable, and this was just an idea you came up out of whole cloth because it's a fancy way as opposed to having your own ki old kitchen egg timer for timing, this actually lets your kid interact a little bit. Or not. Or, or not, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I just feel so bad for the kids. They just can't tell how much game time they've played. So we needed to solve that problem, easy. Awesome, awesome. Uh, these are designs and uh, files that you'll be releasing online? Yes, we can. I'll put them all up on GitHub. It's github slash jerware, J-E-R-W-A-R-E, -E, and you'll be able to see a link to Osh Park to download the circuit board and links to all the parts. The uh, firmware is uh, it can be a hex file. You can install it from a link that's provided there. And uh, it's really, it's, I would say it's a pretty easy build. There we go. Game time's over, kids. Game time's over, video's over. Thank you so much for sharing, Jeremy. My pleasure. We'll see you next time. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Well, now that I have you here, I want to remind you that our newest tested t-shirt is available for just a couple more days. It's our new logo shirt, an exploded diagram design in partnership with those nerdy design sketches. And it's available until Monday, 
on tested.com slash shop. Picking up this shirt allows us to keep on working on model making projects, going to events, and supports us in general. Thank you so much for watching our videos and hope you get this shirt. See ya.